Hello everyone, welcome back to Milestone Gaming. My name is Malachi Gardner. Today I'm going to be playing Marvel Champions by Fantasy Flight Games. I'm going to be using the Ant-Man hero, and I'm going to be going up against Green Goblin in the Mutagen Formula scenario. I hope you all enjoy the video. Alright, so I have the game all set up here. So we have Ant-Man, or Scott Lang as our character here, and then we have our deck. I'm going to be playing with Justice for Ant-Man. And then I have my starting hand here. The villain we're going to be going up against today is going to be the Green Goblin. And the Green Goblin is actually kind of unique uh, for most villains in Marvel Champions because he actually has two scenarios. I can't remember exactly what the first scenario was called, but the second one, the one we're going to be playing today, is called the Mutagen Formula. So there's actually two different scenarios where you fight Green Goblin in Marvel Champions, uh, which is you know, kind of neat, I guess. So in this scenario, uh, we have... Our deck set up here it tells us how to do that, and then we have to put a Goblin Thrall minion engaged with each player, and then we will shuffle the encounter deck after doing that. So I have the Goblin Thrall running engaged with me, and then we have our encounter deck all shuffled up. And then on this side, we have some flavor text. It reads, Green Goblin has released a toxic mutagen gas on in New York City. So the Green Goblin must place seven of these threat tokens on this card to advance it, it starts with two on it, and then it's going to be gaining one each turn. And it says, when completed, in player order, each player not engaged with a goblin minion must discard three cards from the encounter deck and put the first goblin minion they discarded this way into play engaged with them. So that's our scheme there. So that's all set up. And real quick, just a note, um, this is my second playthrough of Marvel Champions. The first playthrough, I did was with Spider-Man against Rhino, and so if you actually don't know how to play Marvel Champions, I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and watch that video. It's actually the first playthrough that I did on this channel. This video is more for people who already know how to play Marvel Champions, and so if you know how to play Marvel Champions, this is the video for you. If you don't know how to play Marvel Champions, the other one would probably be a better place to start. So with that out of the way, let's get right into the gameplay. So. We have Scott Lang here, and the alter ego, so we have Scott Lang, which is Ant-Man's alter ego. He has a hand size of 6 and 12 hit points, so I have my hand of 6 here, and then I have 12 hit points, and then he has recovery of 3, which is kind of nice, and he's in a, a responsibility that says after you change this form, heal 1 damage from Scott Lang. And then over on his hero side, he is Ant-Man, and he has an Response, any of the responsibility, it says after you change this form, remove one threat from a scheme, two threat, one attack, two defense, hand size of five, and then still 12 hit points. Now, the thing that makes Ant-Man so cool is that in addition to having an alter ego side and a hero side, he also has a second hero form. So just fold out the card, and we have Ant-Man here, and this is giant Ant-Man. So this Ant-Man right here, he's has a tiny trait, and then this Ant-Man has the giant trait here. And so he has one thwart, three attack, three defense, only a hand size of four, which isn't as good. He still has 12 hit points, and then response, when you change, after you change to this form, you deal one damage to an enemy. So he, as you can probably tell just from his hero card, is going to be all about changing forms throughout the course of the game. And whenever he switches forms, he's going to be able to do some sort of bonus Effect, such as healing damage, moving forward, or dealing damage. So that's very cool. And then a lot of his hero cards do reflect that as well, which is really neat. So that is what we have there. The Goblin Thrall here is a pretty basic minion. One attack and one scheme, three hit points, and then his guard, which means that while this guy's engaged with me, I can't attack the villain. So um, let's take a look at Green Goblin here. So Green Goblin in stage one has 16 hit points per player, so we dial set to 16. And he has one scheme and two attack, and then he has an attack ability. So that's forced response. After Green Goblin attacks and damages you, place one threat on the main scheme. So that could be interesting. So let's go ahead and get into the hero phase. Like I said, I already have my hand here, so I have an energy card. So it's just nice, just two energy um, resources. We have Ironheart, so it costs two. One attack, one thwart, two health, and then after you play Ironheart from your hand, draw a card. So she can essentially cost one resource because after you play here, you immediately draw a card. So that can be really nice there. Heroic Intuition, you 
costs two, and then you play under any player's control, maximum per player, that hero, your hero gets plus one thwart, just a nice solid card there. Army of Ants, support card that costs one, and it has a heroic action saying, if you are in tiny hero form, exhaust Army of Ants, deal one damage to an enemy, and then resize, costs zero, you can change to your other hero form, and then you draw a card, so our tiny you can come giant, if you're giant you become tiny, and then it draws a card, so it just replaces itself in your hand, and of course, every time you switch, and this is of course in addition to the ability to just change one, your form once per turn that all heroes have, uh, you can do it a second time with resize, and then of course when you change forms, you're going to be able to do some extra bonus stuff. And then we have the Quinn Carrier, which costs three to support, play only if your identity has the Avenger trait, and Scott Lang does not have the Avenger trait, but both of his hero forms do, so that won't be a problem. And then, as a resource, you can exhaust Queen Carrier and generate a wild resource. So, this is a very nice card that I actually will want to try to get out right now if I can. Alright, so I think what I'm going to go do is I am going to go into my giant hero form. And after I do that, I'm going to deal one damage to the Goblin Thrall. Alright, so now he's down to two hit points left. Alright, so now I'm going to play Resize. So I'm going to change my other hero form. So now I'm going to go Tiny, and then I draw a card. So let's look at that in just a bit. And then I remove one threat from this scheme right here. Draw this card. So it's Pin Particles. It's a resource. Give you one wild resource. And then after you spend this card, you heal two damage from your hero if you are in Giant hero form, or draw one card if you're in Tiny hero form. Okay? That's pretty neat. And so let's see what I want to do, if I do that, that, and that. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and spend these two cards to play the Quint area, so I'll play that there. And then, because I'm in tiny hero form, I'm going to draw one card. Alright, it's giant strength. Costs one to upgrade, it says, hero response, after you change to giant hero form, you get plus one attack until the end of this turn. Alrighty. So, then I think that I'm going to exhaust Queen Carrier and discard Heroic Intuition, and then I'm going to play Ironheart. So, I'm going to now be able to draw a card, and it is the Avengers Mansion. Alright, so I can't play this turn, but I think I want to save it for next turn, so I'm going to discard Giant Strength, and then I'm going to play Army of Ants, so I'll play that, and then I'm going to exhaust it, I'm going to be able to do one damage to an enemy, so I'm going to deal one damage to the Goblin Thrall, and then I'm going to use Ironheart to attack the Goblin Thrall, so she's going to exhaust, and she's going to take one damage, putting her down to one hit point left, and then she takes out the Goblin Thrall, and then I have the Avengers Mansion, but I'm not going to do anything with this, I'm just going to say it for next turn, and then hopefully I'll be able to play it next turn, and that'll help me out. Then, I'm going to go ahead and flip over for my free flip to the Ant-Man side that is giant, and I do one damage to Green Goblin, just for flipping, and then I'm going to exhaust my hero to do my to attack the enemy, so it's going to do three damage to Green Goblin, putting him down to 12 hit points. Alright, and so I think that's everything that I'm going to be able to do, so I'm going to ready all of my cards. All right, so my hand size is four, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw up to my hand size. So I have Hive Mind. And so it says, play only if your entire, play only if your entire hero form, costs two, it's an event. So Hive Mind costs two resources. It's an event that says, play only if you are in tiny hero form. Hero, hero action, thwart, remove two threat from a scheme, remove one additional threat from that scheme for each army of ant support you control. All right. Wrist Gauntlets, and it costs one it's an upgrade. It says, here actually, if you are in giant hero form, exhaust Wrist Gauntlets and spend two physical resources to stun an enemy. Or you can, you also have the ability that says, if you are in tiny hero form, exhaust Wrist Gauntlets and spend two energy resources to confuse the enemy. All right. And then Sonic Rifle, costs three. It says restricted, uses two, it has two charge counters. And so here actually you can exhaust Sonic Rifle and remove one charge counter from it to confuse an enemy, and then deal three damage to that enemy instead if it is already confused. Okay.
some pretty neat stuff there. So now let's go on to the villain turn. So just gonna have one threat token be placed on this uh, scheme card, and then he's going to attack me because I'm in hero form. So I'm actually going to go ahead and exhaust Ironheart to defend the attack. And he has two attack plus one boost icon. So that's gonna do three damage to Ironheart. So she is defeated. And then he has this force response that says, after being goblin attacks and damages you, place one threat on the main scheme. Now, luckily for us, you in this case refers to your identity. So if he attacked and damaged Ant-Man, we place one threat. But this ally, Ironheart, is not considered to be you in this case. So I don't have to place a threat in the main scheme. And I'm going to draw a card from the encounter deck. It is Goblin Knight. Two scheme, two attack, seven health. Force response, after Goblin Knight attacks you, discard one card from the encounter deck. If that card is a Goblin Minion, put it into play and engage with you. All right, so that is nasty. And then I'm just gonna go back over to my turn and let's see what I'm going to do. So I could still play the Avengers Mansion if I wanted to, but in order to do that, I have to discard these three cards and use my Quinn Carrier. So that would be the only thing I could do this whole turn. Uh, the, so that'd be the only card I could play for this whole turn. So it could be worth it, or I could just play some smaller stuff, which also could be worth it. Um, hmm. So what I could do is I could discard the Sonic Rifle to play Risk Gauntlets. Then I could discard Hive Mind and exhaust the Quinn Carrier. And so Hive Mind gives me one physical resource, the Quinn Carrier generates wild resources, so then that could both be used for the Risk Gauntlets so I could stun an enemy, and then I could stun Green Goblin or the Goblin Knight, and that could be pretty cool. You know what, actually, that does sound like a pretty good plan. So I'm going to go ahead and discard a card. So I'm going to discard Avengers Mansion, and then I'm going to play Risk Gauntlets, and then I'm in Giant Hero Form, so I'm going to exhaust Risk Gauntlets, Gener wild resource here, and then discard Hive Mind, so I can stun an enemy. So I could just stun the Green Goblin. That could potentially be very good because the Green Goblin draws attack modifiers, so he does at least two damage. He could do something between two and five damage with his attacks, or I could put it on the Goblin Knight. The reason I want to do that is because the Goblin Knight does two damage every time it attacks, and uh, I discard one card from the counter deck. And if it's a Goblin Minion, I put into play Engage With Me. So Green Goblin has potential to do a lot more damage and also to place threat on the scheme here, but the Goblin Knight has potential of putting more Goblins out. So not sure exactly which one I'm going to do. So those both sound like they could be good options. I think I am going to put it on the Goblin Knight just to prevent him from spawning more Goblins. So he is stunned. And then I could attack him. You know, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to spend, I'm going to exhaust my character and do three damage to Goblin Knight. He's down to four health. And then I will flip over to the tiny side on Ant-Man. And then I remove one threat from Scheme because of my ability. And then I will exhaust Army of Ants to deal one damage to Goblin Knight. Alrighty. And I should still be exhausted. Uh, changing form is not ready or here, unfortunately. So that was not as exciting of a turn as last turn, but still is quite good. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this card, and then I'm going to draw up to five. Three, four, five. Alrighty. So if Mockingbird can play this and stun an enemy, which could be cool. Genius. Under surveillance. Attach the main scheme, max one per scheme, increase the threat value, the target threat value of attached scheme by four. Another giant strength, so I get some extra attack, and then strength. So lots of resources in this hand. I could use strength for my risk gauntlets and just stun an enemy with strength. So that actually could be really cool. Alright, so now we're gonna place one threat here. The Goblin Knight attacks, but he's stunned, so this goes away. And then the Green Goblin's going to attack me. I do not think that I'm going to block, so I'm just going to take the damage. And it is going to be two damage plus no boost icon, so it's just two damage there. 
Alright. And then he has an ability, a boost ability that says, put Goblin Soldier into play engage with you. So, it's now going to be engaged with me. And he says that when defeated, deal one damage to engaged player. And then he says, once game, one attack at five health. Since the Green Goblin did do damage to me, he is going to place one threat on the main screen, which bumps that up to three. All right, so now the Goblin Soldier, because he enters play during the attack phase, he's still going to be able to attack me. So he's going to do one damage to Ant-Man. I'm not going to block it or anything. So now I'm down to nine health. Okay, finally, we're just going to play a card from the counter deck. Goblin Glider. Attached to the enemy with the highest printed hit points, and without another Goblin Glider attached, if you cannot, this card gains Surge. Hero action, spend two energy resources, discard this card, and the attached enemy gets plus th one attack. And so the highest printed hit points would be, of course, Green Goblin. So now he gets plus one attack until I spend two energy resources to discard that card. Okay, now it's back over to my turn, and... I do kind of want to get rid of that, so I could play these two cards here as resources to just get rid of that and then reduce the amount of damage he does to me. I'm going to use the genius as a resource, and then I'm going to exhaust the Quinn Carrier, and then it's going to give me the three resources I need to play Mockingbird, and I'm going to stun the Green Goblin, and then I'm going to go ahead and discard these two cards to discarded the green goblin sorry the, the goblin glider and then now he's back down to his starting attack i'm going to go ahead and exhaust army of ants and i'm going to do one damage to the goblin soldier and then i'm going to flip over to the giant form do one damage to the goblin soldier and then i'm going to exhaust ant-man to defeat the goblin knight so now he's gone, and then I am going to go ahead, exhaust the Risk Gauntlets, spend these two resources, and I'm going to stun the Goblin Soldier, which isn't going to like help me too terribly much. It's going to prevent one damage from being dealt to me, which is better than nothing. I'm going to go ahead and use Mockingbird to thwart the main scheme. There we go, and that's going to be my turn. So I'm going to... Ready everything and draw four cards. Alright, so I have two Sonic Rifles. Giant Stomp. So it costs three, it's an attack. Play only if you are in Giant Hero form. Hero action, attack, deal one damage to each minion. Deal eight damage to an enemy. That's pretty good. I could do one damage to the Goblin Soldier and one damage to the Green Goblin, so it's pretty good. And then Wasp costs three. Two thwart to attack, three health. Hero response, after Wasp enters play, and deal 3 damage to an enemy if you are in giant hero form, or remove 2 threat from a scheme if you are in tiny hero form. So, pretty nice there. So then, we're going to go into the enemy turn, we're going to go back up to 3 threat, and then both these enemies are stunned, so let's remove those, and then draw a new encounter card. Assault, alright. So, since we're in hero form, the Green Goblin is going to attack me. And I'm not going to block. Luckily, no boost icons or anything there. So, two damage, and then because he did damage me, we're going to place one threat on the scheme. Now it's back over to me. That was a nice, really not too... Uh, that really wasn't actually too bad of a villain turn, honestly. Alright, so, now I can just discard all of these cards here. Um, these three cards here to play Giant Stock, which does look really nice. Of course, playing Wasp could also be very good. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to exhaust the Quinn Carrier and then discard these two Sonic Rifles. And then I'm going to play Wasp. And then I'll be able to save this for a future turn. So, um, so we, after Wasp enters play, I'm going to deal two damage to an enemy because I am in giant hero form. I'm going to go onto the Goblin Soldier. And then I'm going to exhaust Mockingbird and defeat the Goblin Soldier. And then when he's defeated, he's going to do one damage to me. Got six. Okay. And then next turn I'll be able to play the Giant Stomp, which would be pretty nice. So then I'm going to use Wasp 
to remove two threats from the main scheme. Then I'm going to exhaust Ant-Man to do three damage to the Green Goblin, putting him down to nine health. Then I'm going to flip over to the tiny form here, and I'm going to remove one threat from the scheme. Alrighty then, I'm going to do exhaust the army of ants and do one more damage to the Green Goblin. So now he's on eight. Gonna ready all of my cards. I'm gonna save this card for next turn, not discard it. Drawing up to five cards. We have two copies of Turn the Tide. This costs zero, and it says after your hero thwarts and removes all threat from a scheme, deal three damage to an enemy. I have two of those, so after I remove all the threat from that scheme, I can just do six damage to Green Goblin, which is nice. Another under surveillance, heroic intuition, and then I still have my giant stop. So actually, I think I could do a lot. Of, I could do a lot of damage next turn if I were to remove last threat from unleashing the mutagen. Play two turn the tides, and then discard these cards here, and exhaust the Quinn Carrier to play Giant Stomp. Let's go ahead and resolve the enemy turn first. I'm going to place one threat there. I'm going to exhaust Mockingbird to take the hit there from Green Goblin, and then it's the Goblin Soldier, so he's going to enter play, and two damage is going to be dealt to Mockingbird, she only has one health. Then the Goblin Soldier is going to attack, and I'm not going to block, she's just, it's just going to do one damage to me, and then the encounter card is going to be... Goblin Reinforcements, it's a side scheme, it's two threat, and when revealed, place one additional threat here for each Goblin Minion in play. There's one Goblin Minion, so we're going to place two threat plus one additional threat, so that's going to be a total of three threat. Alrighty then, so now, I think that doing my plan does sound pretty good, so I'm going to go ahead and try to do that. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and exhaust Wasp, and I'm going to remove two threat from the scheme here, and then I'm going to go ahead and thwart with Ant-Man, remove the last threat, this card goes away, and then I can play both of these turn the tides because after your hero thwarts and removes all threat from a scheme, deal three damage to that enemy, so I'm going to do three to an enemy, so I'm going to do six damage total, and I am going to target the green goblin, so now he's going to go down to two health. Okay. Then, I'm going to exhaust army of ants to do one more damage to him. Then I'm going to flip over to my giant form. And then I'm going to do the last damage to green goblin. So now, his first stage is defeated, and we're going to go on to his second stage. So his attack stays the same, but his scheming goes up by one. He now has 18 health, we're going to deal 2 encounter cards to each player, and then he still has this ability of after he attacks and damages me, I'm going to place 1 threat on the scheme. So 18 health here, and then we'll resolve these cards here. Gang up. The villain on each minion engages with you, attacks you, that's really bad. And then, so the goblin soldier is going to do 1 damage to me, and then the green goblin is going to attack me, and he's going to do 3 damage to me. Which is really bad, actually. Plus one throughout the main scheme. Alright, then the second card is going to be another Goblin Soldier. So, this is really not looking super great. Uh, that gang up treachery really was really bad right now. So, I am down to one hit point, and... I'm not entirely certain if I'm going to be able to prevent it myself from being defeated on the next turn, which really stinks. Um, so, if I had one more physical resource, then I could use my Risk Gauntlets to stun the Green Goblin, and I could block the Goblin Soldiers with Ant-Man and Wasp, and then we'd be fine. Um, if I... I have one resource from the Goblin, the the Queen Carry can generate a random resource, but I don't have any physical resource cards in my hand to get that second resource that I need. So I can't stun anyone. Um, neither of these cards are really going to help me, so I think I may as well just go ahead and do the Giant Stomp. Uh, just go out with a bang, I suppose. So I'm going to do one damage to each minion, and then eight damage to Green Goblin. So now he's down to ten health. Alright, and then... There's nothing else I can do, so I'm going to have to ready everyone. Um, ideally, I could just flip over to my 
alter ego form, but I can't do that because I've already flipped one time. So I can't do that, unfortunately. So we have Nick Fury, which is really nice. Uh, after we play him, we can choose one, we can move two threat from a scheme, draw three cards, or deal four damage to an enemy. At the end of the round, if Nick Fury is still in play, discard him. Very similar to Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. We actually have two of these concussive blows, and it says you can confuse an enemy if you paid for this card using a physical resource to deal three damage to that enemy, and they do both have physical resources. If I had this last turn, I could have stunned the Green Goblin. Unfortunately, I did not. And then we have the Army of Ants, so if we have a second one of these, that will also do two damage each turn by exhausting each one of them once. Uh, I think there's like three Army of Ants, so it's really cool, you can kind of hold them out there. Um, but anyway, we're going to place one threat on the scheme there, and then the Green Goblin's going to attack me. I'm going to exhaust Wasp to block that, and he's going to do four damage to her. Alright, so she's defeated. And then I'm going to exhaust Ant-Man to take the hit from one of these Goblin Soldiers. So that's blocked. I have three defense, they have one attack. And then unfortunately the second Goblin Soldier is going to attack me, and there is nothing I can do to prevent that. So. Oh well, um, I guess I'm losing another game here. So that really was unfortunate how I, 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 mean, I was doing really well. And I got down to 10 hit points, but those two encounter cards coming out during the second phase, that really was not great. And really, the gang up really was what got me because that is it was two attacks at that point. So the Goblin Soldier and the Green Goblin were both attacking me. And so that just did enough damage to get me to a point where I couldn't really recover. And then the second Goblin Soldier came out. And so, yeah, if I hadn't flipped over that first time, I could have gone to my Alter Ego form and just kind of rusted up a bit. Um, but of course, then the Green Goblin would have schemed. And the Green Goblin and all these Goblin Soldiers would have all schemed. And at that point, there was three threat tokens on the card there. And so then four would have gone out plus whatever the Green Goblin gets for his scheme card, uh, for his uh, boost card, rather. And so in that's, this case, if we drew this card, it would be five threat tokens. And then that would have gone on to the next game, and we'd have done some more bad stuff there. So either way, it's not great. If I had been able to flip over to my Alter Ego forum, then that would have prevented the loss, uh, at least momentarily delayed it. But as it is, there's nothing I could do. If you all enjoyed this video, I hope it was helpful to you. If you did enjoy this video, please like it, and please consider subscribing to Malstorm Gaming and hitting that bell icon so you're notified whenever I upload more content like this. And in the meantime, thank you for watching, and happy gaming. Mm -hmm.